we're talking about today is diver uh, personality diversity, which is a topic I'm very, very passionate about. And let me give you a little bit of history. I started our consulting business about 10 years ago, pretty much around the time that I moved to Lima. And uh, uh, for the first few years, I worked mostly with ethnic and cultural diversity. So I did um, a lot of the um, bias awareness and, and how to get people from different cultures and different ethnic groups to get along together, to get along better. And one of the things I started rec uh, recognizing and realizing is that culture and ethnicity were part of the issue, but they were not the only issue. Um, for instance, I'm in a so-called intercultural marriage. My husband is Caucasian American from Lyme, Ohio, and I'm a Latino woman from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I can assure you that the joys and the tribulations, the fun part and the not so fun part of our marriage of 15 years, do not really come from cultural differences. <laughs> that stopped being an issue probably about 15 years ago. <laughs> what we're really dealing with is something else, and that's that something else is what we're going to be talking about today. Take a look at your bingo board. Are there any bad sentences in there? Are there any qualities that you say, ooh, this is bad? I'm challenging you to, tell, to give me a bad one. Yes, sir. What's your name? It's Mark. Hi, Mark. And someone I couldn't need anybody to fill out for me. I wasn't just randomly choosing. I was asking people for specific qualities. Uh-huh. So it fell off my bingo. I still lost, by the way. <laughs> I work well with others as long as I'm the boss. Nobody wanted to fess up to that. No, d nobody did. No, I haven't. I've worked a couple people. Oh, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to fess up to it. Theoretically, it's quote unquote bad. That means you're bossy. Now, let's flip this up and tell me what's good about that. You get stuff done. You get stuff done. Do you need people like that in your team? Yeah. Oh, heck yes. You need people like that in your organization. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, give me another one that people may think in some situations could be bad. My working space is disorganized, and that doesn't bother me at all. I'm sorry, your name? Gail. Gail. Okay. Bad? Is that bad? No. Not bad. Okay. I have some people here who don't agree. All right. I signed for you. <laughs> no. Now, that was in my working space, and my coworker didn't to, I would have signed to that. But she asked do some people think that that's bad, and a lot of people do. Good point. Good point. Now, what could be good about this organization? Free-flowing thoughts. Free-flowing thoughts. And you know what? When you try to be too organized, too perfectionistic, too methodical, your free-flowing thoughts go to space. You cannot be highly creative and very perfectionistic at the same time. You can be both. But you have to turn off perfectionism when you're creating. And then you perfect after you've created. So those things are not bad. They are good depending on the situation. Now, at the time in which you're, you're trying to check all, anybody here is an accountant or in finances, like if you decide to be very creative there, it might be a problem. <laughs> okay? So it can be good or bad depending on the situation you are. And that's something that in my diversity practice I see a lot. The thing is personality is under the skin. It's beneath the surface. So sometimes we don't consider it. We don't think that that's what the issue is. It's so much easier to say it's because one is a Latino and the other is not, or it's because so-and-so is a woman. And that's what got me so interested in this topic to begin with. Think of somebody who drives you crazy. Are you thinking? Can everybody here think of somebody who drives you crazy? How many of you have people who drive you crazy? Okay. All right. Now we're talking. Now, how many of you have thought of people whose visible diversity is close to yours? How many? Okay. Think about that. If all we were talking about with diversity were visible diversity. We would, by definition, be getting along great with everybody who looks like us. 
do you get along great with everybody who looks like you? <laughs> okay, so now we're talking. Now, please, pay, uh, uh, I, I want to make absolutely clear that I'm not saying here that visible diversity does not matter. It matters hugely. I'm not saying here that there is no such thing as racism, that there is no such thing as prejudice, and that there are no cultural issues. I'm not, because th these things are very, very important. I'm saying there is also this other side, and if we don't take a look at this other side, we'll think we'll have handled the diversity issues in our organization and our teams and our families, and we have not, because we're not touching upon what happens beneath the surface. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what personality means. Personality is a pattern of behavior. Who here would say that I'm extroverted? Anybody here would agree with that? Oh, okay, I wonder why. Um, you will say that I'm extroverted because there is a whole bunch of characteristics that correlate when people do their studies. They correlate with one another and that I show consistently. It's a pattern. I smile a lot. Um, I talk to people a lot. Uh, I will consistently want to go out. And the more tired I am, the more people I want to meet. And if I'm very tired at the end of the day, how many of you, let me ask this question, how many of you would, will go to a conference? You go to conferences a lot or go to conferences once in a while? Okay. So you go to those conferences, right? And they have meetings all day long and they have sessions like this one and then you have lunches. How many of you at the end of the day at that conference just want your hotel room and just leave me alone? Okay. How many of you at the end of the day, that same conference, want to go karaoke with perfect strangers? Anybody? All right, here are your extroverts, guys. Because the more tired we are, the more we want to meet with people and go karaoke and do wild stuff, because that's how we relax. That's how people are different this way. Okay, some interesting things about personality. Personality is fairly stable across life. It doesn't change a lot. The folks who do the statistical calculations say that an average, it doesn't change more than half a standard deviation after about age 20. And there are some changes between, let me go down, um, there are some changes between ages 20 and 30. Why? What happens on age 20 around? Marriage. marriage. What? Children. children. Jobs. jobs. Marriage, children, jobs, adult responsibilities. That's when adult life starts. And the jobs in particular changes a lot. How many of you would say, I'm a little different at home than at work? Oh, yeah. Okay, because we adapt a little bit at our jobs. So there are some changes between ages 20 and 30. However, those of you who have young kids, young kids, anybody who has young kids, younger than 10? All right, about age six is when it really starts crystallizing. And if you have a child who is about five to seven years old, look at that child now, you're looking at the adult in a way. So if your child is very sociable, they're probably gonna be very sociable. And if your child is driving you insane, Anybody? Okay, don't raise your hand now. Uh, if your child is driving you bonkers, know that you're probably raising a future leader. And that might make you feel better. <laughs> because, and that's something we were talking about. Uh, Lori and I were with a group of moms the other day. And what I was saying to them was, okay, you've got a person who was born to lead. You have a person who was born to be in control. Those same characteristics that is going to allow that child to be in control when she grows up are already there, except she's not in control yet. And she's not the boss yet. And she wants to be desperately. So that's why they're driving you crazy. 